Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'd brothers and sisters in Islam Hayakumullah wa bayyakum wa baraka fikum Ha nahnu qad wasalna ila tilka al-lahza allati la talam antadhartumuha Ala wa hiya lahza tu tahadduthi an al-aqidati al-wasitiyya li shaykh al-sami ibn taymiyya Alayhi rahmatullah Specifically we stopped last week, was it, or the week before, uh, the statement of Shaykh al-Islam, wherein, rahimahullah, he said, وَاتِبَاعُ سَبِيلِ السَّابِقِينَ الْأَوَّلِينَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ أي وَمِنْ طَرِيقَةِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ Meaning, from the way of Ahl al-Sunnah, اتِبَاعُ is to follow إلى آخره what was mentioned earlier. فهي معطوفة على اتباع الأثار. So this is in conjunction with the previous statement that had to do with following the narrations of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. So let's go into these words one by one. قوله السابقين يعني إلى الأعمال الصاب الصالحة. سابقين which is translated as those the the foremost the the first people. Those who yo, those who preceded us, meaning those who preceded us in doing righteous deeds. وقوله الأولين يعني من هذه الأمة الأولين which is the earlier ones of this أمة. So they are the one who preceded us in righteous deeds, and they are the ones who actually came before us. Oh, that's why I didn't want to do that. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, let's get back on track. And uh, they are the, fir the, the, the first, the earlier of this generation of the Ummah. Well, Muhajirun Manhajaru ila al Medina. So the, the immigrants are those who migrated to Medina from where? From Mecca. Well, Ansar, as for the Ansar, the helpers. أهل المدينة في عهد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Those would be the inhabitants of Medina at the time of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. حلو. وإنما كان اتباع سبيلهم في من منهج أهل السنة والجماعة. Why is it the reason why following their path is from the methodology of the people of Sunnah and جماعة? لأنهم أقرب إلى الصواب والحق من من بعدهم because by default they are closer to what is correct and to the truth and those who came after them. وكلما بعد الناس عن عهد النبوة and the more the more uh, the people are farther away in time from the era of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. بعدوا من الحق they will also be far and distant from the truth وكلما قرب الناس من عهد النبوة and the closer the people are to the era and the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم قربوا من الحق they will also be closer to the truth وكلما كان الإنسان أحرص على معرفة سيرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وخلفائه الراشدين كان أقرب إلى الحق and the more a person is keen on knowing the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the rightly guided khulafa, the more this person is nearer to the truth. And I cannot emphasize this point enough, my brothers and sisters. And this is a moment of pride. And this is a moment of pride. I was just having a discussion with a very beloved brother of mine, brother Sajid, uh, which y'all don't know. Uh, he's a British brother who lives in, in, in Dubai and I see him every now and then when I visit, we stay in touch often. And, um, I was sharing with him, you know, discussing my reaction video to the Dio Bundys. And he was wondering like, what's going on? Like, why do these people not understand? Like, what is the issue that they have with us? And in summary, the way I see it is we are such a challenge for them. Because from a textual point of view, we are undefeatable. We cannot be defeated. Our manhaj is so sound, so well constructed, so deep, so strong, 
that they can't phase us. They cannot phase us. Mention any deviant on earth. Tablighi, Ikhwani, Diobandi, Barelvi, Shi'i. Ask them which one of the Sahaba was like you. Which one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ was like you? Which one preached Ash'ariya? Which one preached Diobandiya? Which one preached Shi'iya and Rafidiya? Which one pre preached Jahmiya? Which one preached Mu'tazilia? And the list goes on. Nobody could say anything. They all have to just shut up and have to refer their entire aqidah and manhaj to some individual who came hundreds of years after the Prophet ﷺ and the early generations. You know how ludicrous this is and how powerful it is at the same time? We are the only people that can comfortably say, I don't have an individual, a an individual that I adhere to uh, blindly. I'm following a group of people that were the closest to the truth because they were the closest to the earlier, the best generation. They are the best generation, no doubt. Based on what? Based on Quranic verses and, and a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. Do you understand the strength that we have? Imagine like, imagine if I was a Diobandi. Like how would I even justify? How would I substantiate my whatever it is that I believe? You understand? Like who do you refer to? If you're a Tablighi Jama'at, like what? At which point was Tablighi Jama'at made as a group? You're going to have to refer to a, a, a time in history where this thing was introduced into Islam. Do you understand the severity and the gravity and the magnitude of this fact? Do you know how blessed we are that we could comfortably sit here and say, y'all crazy. All y'all are crazy. All y'all are tripping. Every single individual that doesn't follow the way of the Salaf is majnoon. In one way or another, he has a form of junoon, a form of, of craziness, insanity that has overtaken him. And he's trying night and day and trying as hard as he can to make something out of nothing, to prove validity of that which is invalid. It is pathetic, pathetic. It is sad. It is disgusting, but it is real. Meanwhile, here we are. What do you believe? I believe in what the Prophet ﷺ said about Allah and what Allah said about Himself. And I don't, I don't change the the meaning. I don't distort the meaning. I don't deny the meaning. Masha Allah, Tabarak Allah. What type of Islam do you follow? The one understood by the Sahaba. Why? They understood Islam better. I try to follow their, their footsteps. Masha Allah, Tabarak Allah. Who's your Sheikh? I don't have a Sheikh. Who's like the, the Sheikh? Your Mawlana. I don't have a Mawlana. My Mawlanas go back from Abu Bakr and Umar, Uthman and Ali all the way until the Mashaykh who followed them in goodness and righteousness until now and until, and the, until the end of time, until the al Qiyamah. I don't got no one individual that my who's 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 uh, uh, my life revolves around his opinions and his positions and his statements. Do you understand what a big? This is why our uh, uh, spubs brothers have gone astray in this regard because they have followed the way of the sectarianists in in erecting and and placing and and. Uh, People, individuals that dictate everything for them. And we don't roll like that. And the irony is once they set up a person for that position, soon after they take him off the manhaj and they warn against him. So he only also plays a temporary role in terms of him being the ultimate uh, reference for, for who they take knowledge from and who they don't take knowledge from. And they have all these uh, differences among them because they have followed the way of Ahlul Bid'ah. So we remain to be the only individuals who are upon the way of the Salaf without that sectarian illness promoting this way. Explicitly, vividly, consistently, throughout the years, without shying away from the truth, without compromising, without watering down, without playing games. 
And we praise Allah for that. And you should praise Allah for that. I don't know what else to tell you, y'all. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. ولهذا ترى اختلاف الأمة بعد زمن الصحابة والتابعين أكثر انتشارا وأشمل لجميع الأمور. That's why you see the difference of this ummah after the time of the prophet, after the time of the Sahaba and their followers, is way more abundant and prevalent than and and it encompasses way more matters, a lot more subjects. لكن الخلاف في عهدهم كان محصورا. However, the difference. At their time, was very much limited. It was limited to a few things. Wait. Sorry, guys. فمن طريقة أهل السنة والجماعة أن ينظر في سبيل السابقين الأولين من المهاجرين والأنصار فيتبعوها. So from the path of أهل السنة والجماعة, from the way of أهل السنة والجماعة, is that we look into. The way of the earlier generations from among the immigrants and the helpers, and therefore subsequently we follow it. Because following their path will lead to loving them. Due to the fact that they are closer, or along with the fact that they are closer to the correct and the truth, the correct position and the truth. خلافا لمن زهد في هذه الطريقة خلافا لمن زهد في هذه الطريقة unlike those who have become uh, self-sufficient زهد is asceticism is when you feel you're independent you're in no need unlike those who feel that they are in no need of that path وصار يقول هم رجال ونحن رجال أها. and then they proceed to say they are men and we are men. And he doesn't care if he opposes them. They were men who did their ishtihad, and we are men who do our ishtihad. As though the statement of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman Ali is similar to the statement of this guy and that guy from among the ummah. This is wrong and deviant. فالصحابة أقرب إلى الصواب. The the companions were closer, closest to the correct position, to the correctness. وقولهم مقدم على قول غيرهم من أجل ما عنده من الإيمان والعلم. And their statements and their opinions should be given precedence over the opinions of others because of what they possessed of faith and knowledge. وما عندهم من الفهم السليم والتقوى الأمانة because of what they had of sound understanding along with piety and trustworthiness وما لهم من صحبة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم and of course because of their companionship with the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم قوله واتباع واتباع وصية رسول الله صلى الله واتباع وصية رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and واتباع uh, وصية رسول الله نعم and following the advice of the direction given by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث قال where he said عليه الصلاة والسلام عليكم بسنة وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided خلفاء after me تمسكوا بها وعضوا بها وعضوا عليها بالنواذج بالنواجذ Hold on to it and bite on it with your molar teeth, which are the ones in the back, huh? So you don't only uh, you don't only adhere to the way of the Khulafa al Rashidin and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. No, no, you hold on to it tight and you even bite on it with your molar teeth. You could can you imagine, my brothers and sisters, if you were drowning, if you were drowning in the sea, and someone threw a rope. To save you, I ask you by Allah, how would you grab onto this rope? Would you grab onto it with your pinky like this? Would you wrap your pinky around the rope and hope that they will be able to pull you out of the water with that grip of yours? No. Would you hold on it with both of your hands? Absolutely. Would you hug the rope tightly? Yes, you would. Okay, if your arms failed you, would you use your mouth and bite on? the rope, so that you can be pulled out of the water and be saved? Yes, you will. My brothers and sisters, your, your need 
to bite on to the way of the Sunnah, to the Sunnah and to the way of the Khulafa is more deserving and more important than you biting on a rope in order to save your life from drowning. Because one will save you in the Akhirah and one will save you in the dunya and your salvation in the Akhirah is more important than your salvation in the dunya. You could drown and go to Firdaus and you could be saved and go to hell. Surely you would prefer the former. You would prefer the former. So it's, it's weird that people don't bite on it with these with the molar teeth, because that's how important it is in this day and time when innovation is widespread. And don't be surprised when the rest of the hadith will explain why. And woe to you. And beware of newly introduced matters. Because every innovation will lead you astray. Of course, we have other wordings of the hadith it doesn't matter even that other narration my brothers and sisters pay attention to this every 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 innovation will lead you astray there is no such thing as good innovation bad innovation innovation is bad in the religion Innovation in the dunya, more power to you. You want to invent uh, practical solutions for mankind to travel, to go here, to do that. No problemo. No problemo at all. But you want to invent into the religion, la ya baba. Mamnu'a. Mamnu'a. La jib shi min andak. Don't bring anything from your house or from your uncle's house. Again, following here is connected to following the narrations. What does wasiya mean? Wasiya is like an instruction, is the covenant you give to someone regarding an important subject matter. The meaning of upon you is my sunnah. Uh, ilakh, by the way, means ila akhirihi, until the end, yani, or etc. This is an encouragement to hold on to the sunnah. And Prophet ﷺ confirmed that by saying, And hold on, bite on it with your molar teeth. And the nawajid are the, the inner, the most inner uh, teeth in your mouth. You know, the ones that usually have the strongest grip. So he commanded to hold on it with the hand and to bite on it with the molar teeth in order to exaggerate the importance of holding on to it. What is the sunnah? It is the way externally and internally. والخلفاء الراشدون as for the rightly guided caliphs هم الذين خلفوا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في أمتي علما وعملا ودعوة are those who superseded the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم predecessor successor نعم who succeeded the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in his أمة in علم in in knowledge وعملا in action وَدَعْوَةً and in inviting people to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تمام؟ طيب. وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ يَدْخُلْ وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ يَدْخُلْ فِي هَذَا الْوَصْفِ وَأَوْلَى مَنْ يَدْخُلْ فِي And the first one to be to be to earn this description and the most worthy of it الخلفاء الأربعة the four rightly guided خلفاء أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ثم يأتي رجل في هذا العصر. Then we get a man in this day and time. ليس عنده من العلم شيء. Does not have any knowledge. ويقول أذان الجمعة الأولى بدعة. The أذان of the first جمعة is بدعة. لأنه ليس معروفا على أحد الرسول عليه السلام. Because it was not known at the time of the Prophet عليه السلام. ويجب أن نقتصر على الأذان الثاني فقط. We should restrict it to the second أذان only. فنقول له we say to him إن سنة عثمان رضي الله عنه سنة متبعة إذا إذا لم تخالف سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the way of Uthman is is a sunnah that we follow as long as it does not oppose the way of the Prophet عليه وسلم ولم يقم أحد من الصحابة الذين هم أعلم منك and none of the Sahaba who are more knowledgeable than you 
and they are more jealous over the deen of Allah بمعرضته. none of them opposed him and he is among the rightly guided khulafa the one who the Prophet commanded that we follow furthermore Uthman based this on a foundation وهو أن بلالا يؤذن قبل الفجر في عهد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that Bilal used to give the adhan before Fajr at the time of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام لا لصلاة الفجر not for صلاة الفجر ولكن ليرجع القائم ويوقظ النائم so, no, so for the person who's standing up in prayer can basically stop and for the sleeping person to wake up كما قال ذلك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم like the Prophet صلى said فأمر عثمان بالأذان الأول يوم الجمعة. So عثمان commanded that the first adhan is given on يوم الجمعة لا لحضور الإمام. Not because of the arrival of the imam. ولكن لحضور الناس. But for the people to start showing up to الجمعة. لأن المدينة كبرت واتسعت because مدينة became bigger and, and, and uh, more spacious. واحتاج الناس أن يعلموا بقرب, بقرب الجمعة قبل حضور الإمام. And the people needed to know about the nearness of صلاة الجمعة before the arrival of the imam. من أجل أن يكون حضورهم قبل حضور الإمام so that they will arrive before the arrival of the Imam. فأهل السنة والجماعة يتبعون ما أوصى به النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم من الحث على التمسك بسنته وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعده وعلى رأسهم الخلفاء الأربعة أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي. So the Sunnah wal Jama'a they follow what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم instructed in guiding us. To hold on to his sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after him. And on top of that would be the four rightly guided khulafa, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. إِلَّا إِذَا خَالَفَ كَلَامَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ خَلَفَةً صَرِيحًا unless, unless any one of them opposes the statements of the Prophet ﷺ explicitly. فَالْوَاجِبُ عَلَيْنَا أَنْ نَأْخُذَ بِكَلَامِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Then it is upon us to accept, to untake and adopt the statements of the Prophet ﷺ when اعتذر عن هذا الصحابي and we apologize on behalf of the Sahabi meaning we excuse him. We نعتذر يعني نجد له العذر we find an excuse for him. We might we find we find an excuse for him. ونقول هذا من باب الاجتهاد المعذور فيه this is an area of اجتهاد he exerted himself where he is excused in this regard. قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور As for the statement of the Prophet وسلم, and woe to you and beware of newly introduced matters إياكم هذه للتحذير أي أحذركم meaning I warn you والأمور بمعنى الشؤون أمور meaning matters affairs والمراد بها أمور الدين what is intended is the affairs of the religion أما أمور الدنيا as for the matters or the affairs of the world فلا تدخل في هذا الحديث it is not included in this narration لأن الأصل في أمور الدنيا الحل because the fundamental principle or the foundational foundational principle regarding the matters of the dunya is the permissibility. فما ابتدع منها فهو حلال anything you innovate into this worldly life it's halal. إلا أن يدل الدليل على تحريمه unless there's an evidence that indicates its prohibition. لكن أمور الدين however the matters of the religion الأصل فيها الحظر the fundamental principle regarding it is prohibition, restriction. Anything that is invented into this religion, it's a haram innovation. Unless you have an evidence from the Quran, from the book and the Sunnah about its validity, uh, about its legislative, legislative nature and validity, basically. Verily, every innovation leads astray. This sentence is, uh, is in connection and is basically branching off from the original warning sentence. What is intended here is to emphasize the warning, the warning that was issued earlier and to also show you the ruling on innovation. كل بدعة ضلالة هذا كلام عام مسور بأقوى لفظ دال على العموم. This statement is general and it is fortified with the strongest type of words that indicate generality. وهو لفظ كل and it is the statement or the word كل every. 
فهو تعميم محكم صدر عن من الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. So it is a general statement that is concise and precise that was issued from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. والرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام أعلم الخلق بشريعة الله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most knowledgeable knowledgeable of the creation of Allah regarding the legislation of Allah. وأنصح الخلق لعباد الله. And he was the most sincere of creation towards the slaves of Allah. وأفصح الخلق بين. And he was the most eloquent of creatures in expressing himself. وأصدقهم خبرا. And he is the most truthful in speech. فاجتمعت في حقه أربعة أمور. So regarding him, four matters came together. علم, knowledge, ونصح, sincere advice. وفصاحة ألكونس وصدق truthfulness نطق بقوله كل بدعة ضلالة all of those came together from this from these uh, four fortifying sources in one man which is the Prophet والسلام, and he uttered the statements كل بدعة ضلالة every innovation is misguidance and will lead astray فعلى هذا according to this كل من تعبد تعبد لله بعقيدة أو قول أو فعل لم يكن شريعة الله فهو مبتدع. Anyone who worships Allah via in a creedal manner or verbal manner or action that is not that is not part of the legislation of Allah, he is an innovator. He is an innovator. فالجهم فالجهمية يتعبدون بعقيدتهم ويعتقدون أنهم منزهون لله. The Jahmites they actually worship, they are worshiping Allah through the aqidah and they think, they believe that they're actually, uh, uh, you know, munazihun, uh, meaning they're, they're freeing Allah from any, anything that doesn't befit His Majesty. That's what they're thinking. That's what they're thinking. والمعتزلة كذلك, but so do the Mu'tazila. والأشاعرة يتعبدون بما هم عليهم من عقيدة باطلة. And the أشاعرة, they also seek nearness to Allah with whatever they are upon of عقيدة باطلة. So listen to this now. Who do you choose? Do you choose uh, Muhammad Hijab? Or do you choose uh, Yasir Qadi? Who do you choose? Let me, let me be specific with Yasir Qadi who tells you that bah, yani, uh, it's, they're just like there's uh, the jurisprudential schools of thought. There's also the ideological schools of thought. Doesn't matter which one. You can be an Ash'ari. It's, it's all good. It's all part of Ahl Sunnah Al-Jama'ah. And here's Sheikh, Sheikh bin Uthameen rahimahullah, telling you specifically that the Ash'ira are upon aqidatun batila. They are upon a false aqidah. And yes, some Ash'aris are worse than others, but whatever type of Ash'ari you are, you are upon a false aqidah. Until you leave Ash'ariya and you join the way of the Athariya, you will be upon an innovation. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide you and guide those around you. وَالَّذِينَ أَحْدَثُوا أَذْكَارَ مُعَيَنَةً يَتَعْبَدُونَ اللَّهِ بِذَلِكَ وَيَعْتَقِدُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مَأْجُرُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ and the reason why I mentioned Muhammad Hijab because you, you we, I got that same insinuation from him in some of his talks. Uh, and especially that one where you speak about the names and attributes of Allah it was a little disturbing, but that's besides the point. Anyways, uh, and those who uh, invented athkar, diff specific, different types of uh, athkar, you know, remembers of Allah, who seek, and they seek nearness to Allah with that. And they believe that they are getting rewarded for that. So the people will tell you, say, you know, subhanAllah 350 times and say, I don't know what, 400 times when they come up with their own dhikr, especially the Sufis and with their turuq and so forth. And although also those who invent actions, uh, uh, you know, the Sufis and their dancing in the masjid, uh, break dancing, um, uh, yeah, any uh, all types of dancing. I've I've seen. I mean, the, the Sufis in the masjid is just something out of this world, man. And they think they they are worshiping Allah, Akhwan. They are actually in their mind, they worship, they're seeking nearness to Allah by by popping a move in the middle of a masjid, and people just like clapping for them and jumping all at the same time. Hey, hey, hey. They, they, to them, this is ibadah, and you're a what, misguided Wahhabi. Not only. Not only are they lost, no, they also have the time and the energy of the day to say that we are crazy Wahhabi Salafis who don't know what's going on in this world. We're missing out on the real Islam because they are the representatives of the real Islam. As if 
the Prophet ﷺ ever danced in the masjid or the Sahaba ever danced in the masjid or did any of the ludicrous things that the, the Sufis do. But you know, what can we do? كل هذه الأصناف الثلاثة الذين ابتدعوا في العقيدة أو في الأقوال أو في الأفعال all of these three categories who have in, in, innovated in عقيدة or in statements or in actions كل بدعة من بدعهم فهي ضلالة every innovation of the innovations is misguidance ووصفها الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام بالضلال and Prophet ﷺ described it as being misguidance لأنها مركب ولأنها uh, لأن, لأن, لأنها مركب ولأنها انحراف عن حق because it's like a vehicle that leads you astray and because it is a means of being diverted away from the truth. تمام؟ طيب. والبدعة تستلزم محاذير فاسدة. بدعة necessitates a number of uh, issues that are corrupt. فأولا تستلزم تكذيب قول الله تعالى اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم. It necessitates that you deny and you belie the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal where he said in the Quran, this day I have perfected your religion for you. لأنه إذا جاء ببدعة جديدة يعتبرها دينا if he brings forward a new bid'a that he considers to be a religion فمقتضاه أن الدين لم يكمل this necessitate that the religion wasn't complete when this ayah was revealed ثانيا تستلزم القدح في الشريعة it necessitates a, a criticism of the legislation وأنها ناقصة and that it is incomplete فأكمل هذا المبتدع we had to wait for this innovator to complete it ما شاء الله تبارك الله ثالثا ثالثا تستلزم القدح في المسلمين الذين لم ياتوا به لم ياتوا بها it also necessitates that you're criticizing and speaking ill of the muslims who did not follow you in that innovation فكل من سبق هذه البدع من الناس دينهم ناقص وهذا خطير because you claim that all of those who came before you before that innovation was made all of them their religion was incomplete because they didn't do what you're doing and that is a dangerous thing to say you understand رابعا من لوازم هذه البدع أن الغالب أن من اشتغل ببدعة from the from the byproducts and the, uh, the necessities of this bid'ah is that for the most part whoever gets preoccupied with bid'ah in شغل عن سنة he will be distracted from a sunnah كما قال بعض السلف as some of the salaf said ما أحدث قوم بدعة إلا هدموا مثلها من السنة no group of people have invented an innovation except that they destroyed and they demolished its equivalent from the Sunnah. Fifthly, these innovations, they, uh, they necessitate the division of the Ummah. Because these innovators, they believe that they are the, peoples of, the people of the truth. And they think everybody else is misguided. Whereas the people of the truth, such as ourselves, we say, أنتم الذين على ضلال. You are the ones who are misguided. فتتفرق, فتتفرق قلوبهم, so our hearts become divided. And that's true. Did you see what happened with the Diobandis yesterday? The two halwa maulanas. Halwa eating maulanas. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. فهذه مفاسد عظيمة. These are great harms. كلها تترتب على البدعة. All of them are a byproduct or an implication of bid'a. من حيث هي بدعة from the fact just based on the fact that it's an innovation مع أنه يتصل بهذه البدعة سفه في العقل وخلل في الدين not only that even though we can also connect to this بدعة سفه في العقل meaning uh, uh, lack of intellect in the mind وخلل في الدين and also a deficiency in one's religion سبحان الله foolishness you become foolish وبهذا نعرف أن من قسم البدعة إلى أقسام ثلاثة أو خمسة أو ستة فقد أخطأ وخطأه من أحد وجهين. By this we know that those who have divided innovation into three types or five or six has made a mistake and their mistake is looked at from two different angles. إما أن لا ينطبق شرعا وصف البدعة على ما سمى بدعة either that what he's claiming to be بدعة actually legislatively we cannot even call it a بدعة وإما أن لا يكون يكون حسنا كما زعم or that it is not good as he is claiming فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كل بدعة ضلالة the Prophet ﷺ said every بدعة is misguidance فقال كل he said every فما الذي يخرجنا من هذا السور العظيم حتى نقسم البدعة الأقسام what will take us out of this strong fortress so that after the Prophet ﷺ says every you come and say no not every let's divide it into categories <laughs> فإن قلت ما تقول في قول أمير المؤمنين عمر رضي الله عنه حين خرج إلى الناس وهم يصلون بإمام في رمضان 
if you were to say, what do you, if one were to say, what do you say regarding the statement of Umar ibn Khattab when he came out to the people and he saw them praying behind the Imam in Ramadan? He said, what an excellent innovation this is. So he praised it and he called it a bid'ah. Tamam? فالجواب أن نقول The answer is to say ننظر إلى هذه البدعة التي ذكرها let us, let us look into this bid'a that he mentioned هل ينطبق عليها وصف البدعة الشرعية أو لا Does the description the legislative description of bid'a does it apply to it or not فإذا نظرنا ذلك if we look closely into that وجدنا أنه لا ينطبق عليها وصف البدعة الشرعية it doesn't even apply the idea of the innovative legislatively innovation or legislative innovation doesn't even apply to this. فقد ثبت أن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم صلى بأصحابه في رمضان ثلاث ليال. It was established that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم led the people, led his companions in Ramadan for three nights. ثم تركه خوفا من أن تفرض عليهم. Then he left it as out of fear that it will become obligatory upon them. فثبت أصل المشروعية. So the 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 legitimacy for for this act of worship was established. Its legislation to be valid was established by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself. When tafa and takuna bid'a shariya, and it's no longer possible to be an innovation. ولا يمكن أن نقول إنها بدعة ورسول الله قد صلها. And we cannot say that it's a bid'a, but Prophet sallam was engaging in a bid'a himself. وإنما سماها عمر رضي الله عنه بدعة. The reason why Umar called it a bid'a لأن الناس تركوها because the people left it. وصاروا لا يصلون جماعة بإمام واحد. And they were no longer praying جماعة behind one imam. بل أوزاعا. They were actually in different groups. الرجل وحده والرجلان والثلاثة والرهط. A man by himself, two men by themselves, three by themselves, a group by themselves. فلما جماعهم على إمام واحد. Then when he gathered them and united them behind one imam. صار اجتماعهم بدعة بالنسبة لما كانوا عليه أول من هذا التفرق. So their gathering became a bid'a in relation to the separation and the division they were going through before beforehand. تمام؟ فإنه خرج رضي الله عنه ذات ليلة. He came out one night. عمر ما الله بيزه ذن. فقال لو أني جمعت الناس على إمام واحد. What would? Why don't I gather the people or unite them behind one imam? لكان أحسن. That would be better. فأمر أبي بن كعب وتميم وتميم الداري أن يقوم للناس بإحدى عشر ركعة. So he commanded Abu Ubay and Tamim to lead the people in eleven rakats. فقام للناس بإحدى عشر ركعة. So فقام للناس. So they led the people in salah in eleven rakats. فخرج ذات ليلة والناس يصلون بإمامهم. So he went out one night and the people were being led by the imam. فقال نعمة نعمة البدعة هذه. إذن هي بدعة نسبية. So it is a بدعة in relation to what they were doing before that. باعتبار أنها تركت ثم أنشأت مرة أخرى. In relation to the fact that it was abandoned and then it was re-established again. فهذا وجه تسميته بدعة. That's why it was called a بدعة in the first place. وأما أنها بدعة شرعية ويثني عليها عمر فكلا. As to claim that it is a legislative innovation and that Umar will praise it, then no. And if brothers and sisters, if you want to know more about this particular subject, please, please do yourself a favor and watch my lecture, The Extermination of Innovation. One of my favorite lectures, hands down. One of my favorite all-time lectures throughout my life. The Extermination of Innovation, from the title to the content to the delivery and to, to the substance. Inshallah, it's very beneficial and it will close the door for anyone who tries to claim that this statement of Umar substantiates or justifies any type of bid'ah that the people engage in today. وَبِهَذَا نَعْرِفُ أَنَّ كَلَامَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمُ لَا يُعَرِضُهُ كَلَامُ عُمَرُ رَضِيَ الْعَنُهُ By this we know that the, uh, the speech of the Prophet ﷺ is not opposed by the speech of Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. فَإِنْ قُلْتَ كَيْفَ تَجْبَعْ بَيْنَ هَذَا وَبَيْنَ قَوْلِ الرَّسُولِ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمُ If you were to say, how do I bring a relation between this and between the same and the Prophet ﷺ? مَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً حَسَنَةً فَلَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً Whoever establishes a good sunnah in Islam, he will have its reward and the reward of those who follow them until يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً فَأَثْبَتْ أَنَّ الْإِنسَانَ يَسُنُّ سُنَّةً حَسَنَةً فِي الْإِسْلَامِ The Prophet ﷺ established that the person can introduce a good practice in Islam. فَنَقُولُ كَلَامُ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يُصَدِّقُ بَعْضَهُ بَعْضَهُ First of all, we say the statement of Prophet ﷺ, they endorse each other. His statements, they verify and they endorse and support each other. 
ولا يتناقض and they do not contradict فيريد بالسنة الحسنة السنة المشروعة what is intended by the sunnah a good sunnah good practice is the the one that is already legislated part of the sunnah meaning not an innovation ويكون المراد بالسنة بسنها المبادرة لفعلها so what is intended by that good practice is hastening towards establishing it يعرف هذا ببيان سبب الحديث how do we know this by knowing the context of this particular hadith وهو أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال قال وحين جاء جاء أحد الأنصار بصرة يعني من الدراهم بصرة عفوا من الدراهم بصرة what am I saying we know the context that when one sahabi from the Ansar came with a surah which is like a, a like a, a, a container of with, with coins ووضعها بين يدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and he placed it between the hands of the Prophet عليه وسلم حين دعا أصحابه أن يتبرعوا للرهط الذين قدموا من من مضر مجتبي النمار uh, when the Prophet وسلم invited the Sahaba to donate to those group of people who came from مضر which is an area, you know, the people that were basically uh, uh, facing these issues. They had these issues and they were very poor. And they are among the uh, major, you know, Arab tribes. His face changed when he saw how bad their condition was. So he invited the people to, uh, to donate. So this man came and the first thing he did was bring out this, uh, you know, this, this uh, container. The Prophet ﷺ, in that context said, whoever then introduces a good practice, he will have its reward and the reward of those who follow him until Yawm al uh, so this is the context you see then is giving sadaqah uh, an innovation that's how you answer this is giving sadaqah an innovation say no so then it is not referring to the innovation that you're thinking about it's not referring to introducing something new into Islam rather into hastening to an act of worship that is already there and then getting the reward of the people or you could also say al-hasana ما أحدث ليكون وسيلة ما أحدث ليكون وسيلة إلى ما ثبتت مشروعيته or we could say what is intended by good practices, whatever has been introduced, so that it can become means to what is already established in the sunnah. Such as the authoring of books, such as the authoring and the, in the, 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 the making of books and the building of schools. Those are an innovation in that sense, but they are innovation in order to establish something that is already established in the sharia, which is teaching and spreading of knowledge. وبهذا نعرف أن كلام رسول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. By this we know that the statement of the Prophet عليه وسلم, the messenger, لا يناقض بعضه بعضا. It doesn't contradict itself. بل هو متفق. Rather it is in agreement. لأنه عليه وسلم لا ينطق عن الهوى because he عليه وسلم does not speak of his own desire. So with this, inshallah, we will conclude. بإذن الله next week we'll begin the discussion on uh, ويعلمون أن أصدق الكلام. أصدق الكلام كلام الله عز وجل but that will be later let's see what y'all got oh my goodness y'all ready already I used to watch Yasser Kari but stopped however in his library chat about the language of Dad he presented Adilla from early books for the correct pronunciation of Dad being closer to Da than the Da thoughts I don't recommend that you listen to Yasser Qadi at all whether it is his library chat or his uh, general rant all of those should be abandoned and left alone he's always going to bring you something funny from back in the day which just just to create an issue among the people even though it might be valid you're still exposing yourself to a lot of deviance so i uh, once again do not listen to yasir qadi next how many times must i wash clothes that have najasa on them for the najasa to turn into the excusable other of najasa Bearing in mind that we got on clothes is najasa mutawasita. Oh my God. You should uh, refer this question to Brother Faris Al-Hamadi who has, uh, uh, he's, he loves to answer those questions on Instagram. So go on Instagram and follow Faris Al-Hamadi and ask those questions to him. Barakallah Fiqh is more qualified than I am in the matters of fiqh. Naam. When, I'm, when I am in congregational salah in silent rak'at, I get doubts if I pronounce the word in Fatiha loud enough, so I repeat it. Can you please demonstrate how to recite Fatiha properly in silent rak'at? Yes.
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين You can hear yourself. The people around you don't have to hear you. You can hear yourself. People around you don't have to hear you. And you can hear if you're missing a word or not. Now, uh, who was Ibn Battuta? Ibn Battuta was a, a traveler. Ibn Battuta was a known traveler who traveled the world. When in divorce, recommended and how to deal with annoying wife. When is divorce recommended? Well, divorce recommended when you can no longer fulfill the rights of each other, when the spouses can no longer fulfill each other's rights, and they've already exerted all the efforts and they've exhausted all the options to be patient and to cope, and they failed. Then divorce uh, could be recommended. How to deal with an annoying wife? By knowing that you're annoying as well. Every woman, every wife is annoying, and every husband is annoying, and every child is annoying, and every parent is annoying, and we're all annoying in some way, and we have to, we have to be patient with each other. We have to persevere. We have to accommodate. Believe me, a husband could be just as annoying, if not more annoying than his wife, and in his mind, she's the most annoying thing in the world, and he's the coolest person in the world, while in reality, it could be the other way around. So just hang in there, man. Take it easy, bro. Should I say Sami Allah Liman Hamid and congregation when Imam says and I rise up from Rukur? Yes, I am of the position that you say the Sami Allah Liman Hamida and then you answer by saying Rabbana Walak al Ham. Naam, you do both, Barakallah Fiq. Salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Can you clarify the statement of Shaykh Al-Sam Shaykh bin Uthaymeen Rahimullah about the authentic hadith of Allah wearing garment in a manner unlike that of the creation? Um, no, I cannot elaborate on this statement right now without any proper preparation. and But just the general principle, the general principle is, we believe in whatever Allah said about himself in a hadith Qudsi uh, or in the Quran, or what Prophet said about Allah in uh, the general narrations or in a hadith Qudsi, and we don't liken Allah to his creation. We take everything face value. Now, um, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani in Ghunni Gunya clearly espouses the Salafi Aqidah. Then why does the Sufi does not follow the Aqidah as most of them believe in unity of existence? Yaqi, because the, the Sufis, because the Sufis are followers of desires. Because those people, yeah, Muhammad, are followers of desires. You will be surprised how many of those saints that are worshipped besides Allah are actually not in agreement with what their followers and their peers do. But this is what following desires does to a person. It, it suspends their ability to be analytical and to think straight and to understand. And desires, that, like dogs with rabies, their desires are guiding them and leading them astray. And they just, they run after them without, without any uh, reasoning, without any intelligence and without any guidance. Subhanallah, you should ask them why don't they follow him? Just like the, just like the Ahnaf, the Ahnaf for the most part are Maturidis and Ash'aris and they don't follow Imam Abu Hanifa in his Aqeedah. Naam. Nor do they follow him in his, in his fiqh. Because he said, if the hadith is sound, then it's my madhab. Yani, Imam Abu Hanifa was clear about his intentions towards the uh, correct position. And even in that, they don't follow him. Naam. In our masjid at Jumu'ah and other times, we join a salah from other areas in the masjid which aren't counted as the prayer areas. Must we pray Tahiyat al-Masjid, how to attain good thoughts of Allah? The, at Jumu'ah and other, other, other times, we join a salah from other areas in the masjid which aren't counted. If it's not, I don't understand. But if it's not a prayer area, yet you're praying with the imam, yeah, you still have to pray the Tahiyat al-Masjid. Uh, how to attain... Good thoughts about Allah, well, how, how by doing it, it's, you know, think good about Allah all the time. Just be a be a nice, a generous individual and think good about Allah. What else can we think about Allah except good? Subhanahu wa taala. Everything from Allah is khair. Ajaban li amr al-mu'min. Rasulullah said, "Amazing, wondrous is the affair of the believer. Fa'inna amrahu kullahu khair. His affairs all good." 
if a, if a calamity befalls him, he's patient, it's good for him. If good things happen to him, he's thankful to Allah, it's good for him. This is not for anyone except for the believer. How could you not think good about Allah after knowing this hadith? Now, what are some negative signs before marriage in a spouse? And should one marry more than once? Uh, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, uh, Captain. What are some negative signs before marriage in a spouse? They uh, watch my lectures. I have many lectures about this. I have a lecture uh, before marriage and after marriage. I forgot what they're called. Check the ones from, huh? No, th there's where's this wedding heading, and there's another one uh, from the one from uh, Qatar, the one I gave in Qatar with the um, Al Manar or I don't know what they were called. They were two lectures. I forgot what I called them right now. Before marriage and after marriage, or something like that. Refer to these lectures, inshallah. They will help you out a great deal. Next. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah If Imam want to rukur, but the person is still reciting Fatiha. If Imam want to rukur, but the person is still reciting Fatiha, and he knew he could finish it before Imam stands, but he still goes to rukur without finishing. Is his prayer valid? Yeah, he he should no, he shouldn't continue to recite the Fatiha. As soon as the Imam, yeah, Fufuz, as soon as the Imam goes for Rukur, you are obliged to go to Rukur. You are obliged to go to, the, even if you know that he's going to stay in Rukur for three minutes and you think you can recite the Fatiha ten times, you're not allowed to continue. You're obliged to go straight to Rukur. The Imam was made so he could be followed. You should follow the Imam. When he goes to Rukur, you go to Rukur. When he goes to Sujood, you go to Sujood. Now, what if you do a bid'ah or fall into shirk unknowingly and die on it while your intention is to follow Allah and His Messenger strictly? Then Allah will deal with you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Don't worry about it. Why Samsung phones, camera nowadays are very huge? It looks very ugly. Okay. If Samsung puts the Z Flip 4 camera and S22 Ultra, it would, it would be much better. Okay, Habibi. Yani. I'm, I'm going to be nice to you because you're a good guy who follows us often. And I'm not going to say something to break your heart right now and devastate you. It's okay. I'll accept that. I'll accept that criticism. It's a subjective opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. If you think you are, they're ugly, no problem, Habibi. Mash. Abshik. Best way to dodge a handshake from a girl in a respectful way. That was that's what we used to do back in the day. <laughs> back in the day, we used to go like this. But you can't do that nowadays. She thinks you're playing games with her. You could just say, Malish, sorry, please, sorry. You just hold your hand to your chest, say, I don't shake hands with uh, with women. Yeah. I'm a man handshaker. And kids. Uh, salam alaikum alaikum salam. What should be the first thing that we teach our young children when it comes to religion? Aqeedah. Teach them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Teach them about Jannah and Jahannam. Teach them about, uh, you know, the is, is beauty of Islam. Aqeedah. It's always, it's always Tawheed. 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 Nah. Can you direct me to a lecture or a book? That clarifies the martyrdom of Hussein. No, I cannot, Ya Ibn Battuta. I told you before, don't delve into these matters. Don't delve into these matters. Leave the matters of the differences that happened among the Sahaba and the Tabi'een alone and focus on, on the important matters. Turn on the AC, please. It's gotten so hot. Uh, we got this WhatsApp group of our former classmates from high school with our different professional backgrounds. Sometimes we ask questions and say, share infos related as means to help one another. Tayyip, next. There's this person who knows, who's known of being too vocal and bold in sharing opinions regardless towards male or female. Even she's involved in several harsh debates for defending her own. Tayyip, next. There's no more? So what's the point? And the one person was nothing but toxic. She was furious being called toxic and then sent backlash to his wife. 
None of both apologies ever since. Sorry, it's long, but we need your advice. I don't know. You need to contact me on Instagram or something because I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand anything. Yeah, bint Ihsan. Uh, if you're praying salah and a bad smell comes and stinks up the entire room to the point where you inhale it, makes you feel sick and you can't see. Can we cover our nose and face until end of salah? Wallah, Bayan, sometimes I wonder if you're, uh, uh, if you're clowning or if you're real. Yeah, I need, I need to go through my channel and look up all the comments that you leave to try to un, try to pinpoint whether you just you 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 you're trolling us or what. Yalla, mash. Next. Uh, what would I? What should I do when the prayer is about to pass, and I'm in Walmart helping my mom or in the car, and also my known. And also any known to love, memorize ten qirat. What? What you should do is you should go pray even if you're in Walmart. Find a corner and pray. Okay? Find a corner and pray. Um, also any known to love, memorize ten qirat. I don't know of uh, any known to love who memorize ten qirat. I don't know of any. They might be out there. Salam alaikum, uh, alaikum salam. And this week or so, I will be seeing a girl for marriage. What should I say about me, and what questions should I ask her? Bearing in mind, I don't know much about her or her family. <laughs> Mansoor, what if you? No, what should I say about me? How am I supposed to answer that question? Well, you can begin by saying, "I am Mansoor, 1992. I attend the weekly classes of Brother Abu Musab uh, in Tafsir and Aqidah." And uh, that should be good enough for you to accept me as a wonderful husband. And I don't know what to tell you, Ya Mansoor. I don't know you, Habibi, for me to tell you what to tell her, Ya Sheikh. Go, you know, you know yourself better. What you ask her, ask her about her aqidah. I would, I, I would be the most savage person to interview a potential wife. Straight up, I'll be like, yo, yo, where's Allah? Huh? What'd you say? What'd you, are, are you are you stuttering? What? What? I will give her a Aqidah quiz. If she passes, Alhamdulillah, if she doesn't pass, Allah ma'u. That's straight up. No beating around the bush. She better be fully covered and fully dressed and fully uh, everything. That That's why if, if you want to be on, on, on point, you know, you shouldn't have a problem in knowing what to ask. You know? Ask her, or is she going to obey you? Will she obey her husband or is she going to be some funky feminist at home? Ruling on having to read haram fiction book for school. Having? Why would you have to read it? And if you have to read it, then inshallah you're excused. If this is something that you have no choice about. Uh, I mean, I love you. I mean, do you have any books in mind you will go over after you finish this book? I recommend Kitab Tawheed. That's an excellent recommendation, and I haven't thought about that yet. What I did think about, inshallah ta'ala, if we all remain alive and healthy, and Allah Azza wa Jal blesses us with completing these, these books, we will vote. Either we will vote or I will dictate, uh, you know, what is the term? Um, uh, forgot the term now. I will, I will dictate on my own which which book we will cover. We will see, inshallah. Uh, is watching MMA haram? Yeah. They're, they're beating the crap out of each other and hitting each other's faces and punching each other consistently. And they're half naked. Not even half naked. They are naked. Ah, this guy. Quran and Sunnah left the comment section on our YouTube channel and came here. Can you clarify your view on mocking, backbiting, and having bad manners with Ahlul Bid'ah and using jokes and slang when teaching the deen? Yes. My view is that they're all permissible. That's why I did them. Yeah, Quran and Sunnah. Yani, do you really believe that I think they're all haram and then I'm just going to do it like right in your face and everybody's face and then act like I don't know what's going on? Like I think that I cannot use slang when teaching the deen. I think it's haram, but I use slang anyways. And then, you know, I'm going to be like, oh, what's going on? What kind of question is this? Did the Salaf uh, uh, 
you know, deal with Ahlul Bid'ah in a certain way? Yes, they did. Are those Ahlul Bid'ah merely Ahlul Bid'ah or are they individuals that they themselves are mocking Salafiyya and mocking the scholars? So are we allowed to retaliate in Islam? Yes, we are. So obviously, Habibi, I believe all of those are allowed. First of all, there's no backbiting for an innovator. So I mock them clearly. I mock the two Diobandi halwa eating uh, uh, fools. I didn't backbite them because it's not backbiting. Uh, having bad manners. Okay, you can consider it bad manners. We thought it was entertaining and fun. And of course, I believe in using jokes and slang when teaching the deen. Therefore, ya Quran and Sunnah person, please. For Allah's sake, please, if you don't agree with me, Ya Habibi, do not learn from me. I don't want you to, to have ill feelings towards me. Understand me. I don't want you to have ill feelings towards me. If you believe my issue is not correct, then don't follow this channel, don't subscribe, and don't listen to the classes. Who's forcing you? I'm not going to, uh, I don't want to make you feel bad, okay? I know you're genuine. I know you believe. You think that it's not correct. Khalas, you're already on, you have enough knowledge. Listen, listen. You have enough knowledge to assess that this is not appropriate. Sah? And the scholars, according to you, didn't approve it. Because according to you, I don't have any scholar to, uh, to verify it. Khalas, good. We're on good terms. So you go in your own way and let me be in my own. Just get out of this uh, circle. Get out of this environment and get out of our uh, zone. Get your own zone and enjoy it. No problem. Do you and, and leave me alone. Khalas, deal? Deal? What, I, what I'm saying and I'm doing, I'm convinced is correct. You feel otherwise, I respect your position. Let it be though. Don't harass me every day and ask me questions in the class and then ask me on my channel. Malish, khalas, Habibi. I obviously believe it's correct. That's why I do it. Next. Uh, the Sufis have a weak shubuha. That they may quote the Africans performing with their sword, spear, and the fish. What should we say about that? What we should say about that is that, first of all, the scholars have differed on what these Africans were doing. And the popular opinion is that they were wrestling in the masjid. And wrestling in the masjid does not mean now that, and uh, does not turn that into dancing and break dancing and singing and using musical instruments or humming and jumping up and down. They were not doing that. They were actually wrestling in the masjid. Now, How to seek Islamic knowledge while studying computer science university? By joining an uh, online Islamic university. Join an online Islamic university that will help you get the job done, inshallah ta'ala. I'm a revert. Alhamdulillah, my parents married four months before I was born. Would I be attributed to my father? Uh, my parents married four months before I was born. Oh, no. Well, in this case, Sufyan, in this case, it doesn't matter if because I'm, I'm guessing your parents are non-Muslims. If your parents are not Muslims, then that doesn't apply to the non-Muslim parents. This matter of being attributed to the father or not does not apply to non-Muslim parents as far as I know. So, Allahu Alam. Yeah. Uh, guys, it's 2.36. We're done. I don't give salam to someone because he was reciting the Quran. I left him reading. He then got upset with me for walking past him and not giving salam. What do you think, Sheikh? I think you're right. I get into this argument with people all the time when I see them having a conversation. When I see them reading the Quran, I don't like to give them salam in order not to interrupt. They get upset. I tell them that this is the opinion of some of the scholars. Some of the scholars, they say, don't give salam to someone who's reading the Quran because you will distract them. Very simple. Very simple. Just tell them that this is an opinion that some of the scholars hold and you're convinced that this is a sound opinion. All right, we're done. We are done. We are done. Sorry, Stephanie. Somehow we missed your question and we won't have time. It's halwa, not Turkish sweets. Is that your question? Allahu alam what your question is. Yalla. Ala kulli hal, hayakum Allah, wa bayakum, jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.